Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about seven signs you have a bad lawyer and what you can do about it. This isn't a fun topic because I'd like to think that my fellow attorneys are all good and that they all do the right thing. However, that's just not the case. The truth is there are good attorneys, bad attorneys, attorneys that aren't a good fit for you, and then there are just mediocre attorneys. So before we get started, in case you're new here, my name is Taylor Darcy from Think Legal, where I help you create the business of your dreams. So welcome. I'm happy to have you here, and I'm happy to discuss these issues with you so that you can make the best, most informed decision about your legal needs, as well as whether someone is a good fit for you for counsel. The, the number one thing that you need to be on the lookout for is that you want to make sure that personality-wise, personality is very important in, in having an attorney-client relationship because they are going to be part of your life, depending on the type of attorney that you have, for anywhere from a couple of months, um, maybe a month or two, for, or, or several years. So it really depends on the case or the matter that you're hiring them for. So you want to make sure that it's a good personality thing. And that brings me to the one, the number one of the, the first sign. If someone won't return or if an attorney or a paralegal or someone that is involved in the case, it doesn't necessarily have to be the attorney. A lot of times, depending on the setup, it'll be the legal assistant or the paralegal that will be answering your questions. If it's a solo, then it'll be the attorney. So this applies to the legal team, not necessarily specific to the attorney. If they don't return a phone call or respond to an email within a reasonable period of time. Now, this is very important that you keep in mind that reasonable may not be immediate. If you send them an email on a Friday afternoon or over the weekend and it's not urgent... So it doesn't, nothing is going to change based on the email. It's not urgent that needs to be responded to right away. And trust me when I say this, your definition of urgent versus their definition of urgent may be two very different things. So they, you send them an email on a Friday afternoon or a weekend, they may not get back to you Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday, depending on, and it just depends if how busy they are, how other emergent things that are happening what other clients that they're already working with that are challenging or difficult. When I say reasonable time period, give them a little bit of time. Don't, don't expect an, an answer immediately. You know, sometimes that happens and I'm, I love it if I can answer someone's email as quickly as possible, but sometimes I don't have an answer for them. And so I'm waiting, not because I didn't get the email, but I'm waiting to give them an answer when it means something rather than just saying, I don't have an answer. So you have to put that into consideration when you're looking at what you're doing for, for that. Because the last thing you want to do is, number one, annoy them, and number two, annoy yourself by trying to do something that just isn't going to happen at that time. If they're not getting back to you reasonable, so, I mean, I'm talking like a week or two weeks, then that might be a sign that they're not a good fit for you, okay? But again, your ex your your needs need to be reasonable. It can't be... You know, I, I send you a text message today uh, in the morning, and if you don't get back to me within an hour, I'm I'm mad at you. That's just not fair to either party. That's not fair to yourself. You're you're setting yourself up for an unrealistic expectation and to be disappointed. The next sign that you've hired a bad lawyer is, and I've seen this before. I've actually seen this repeatedly. Is if they miss a filing deadline or they did not file your paperwork in a reasonable time period. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be immediate. Sometimes it takes quite a bit of time to do something, depending on the complexity of the matter and how often they've filed those things in the past. It also depends on the state. Sometimes I'll submit something and it, it happens so fast. And I'm just, oh, I'm so amazed. I'm so happy. So then I'm excited to be able to give my clients the great news that something exciting happened. In other instances, they take way longer than I'm expecting, and it's more difficult and it's more challenging to be able to give them, my client, any type of information in that respect. But if it's, if it's a behavioral thing, not a time thing, so some attorneys, for whatever reason, procrastinate, they don't, they missed the filing deadline, they made a mistake, that's a sign that this might not be a good attorney for you. 
It, it just depends. I can't tell you what, that that's true or not true. So keep those types of thoughts in mind. The next thing is if they overbill you. Now, this is important because I've had clients in the past where they the, the attorney billed them $7,000 for a contract that was just insane. Like the contract was not worth $7,000, but because they had spent all this extra time on it, it got expensive quick. And I've seen this repeatedly where people will come to me, well, this is too expensive and I spent so much money on this. And it was just, and you're right. It's not a good attorney when they do that, when they spend too much. I had a friend of mine ask me about a bill from a, an attorney where the guy literally left a 30 second message on his answering machine, asking him to call him back and build him a hundred dollars for it. And I'm like, that's absurd. I would never, ever, ever charge to do that because number one, that's it within my, my purview to change or not change. And number two, the, you gave them nothing. You gave them no value, a phone call back, and then you charge them again when they call you. I, no, for me, double dipping is, is not, not cool, not, not acceptable. So that, that's something I would never, ever do, even though hourly billing is, is difficult because of the way that it's set up. So that's, that's number three. Number four, and I've seen this before where attorneys will give people false platitudes to make them, their clients feel better rather than telling the truth. And the truth is a lot of times you may not have a case or you may not have damages or enough damages to make it worthwhile to file. Now, every case, every matter is fact specific. So you can't think that I'm giving, I'm just giving a blanket statement of, an attorney should under promise and over deliver and they should always, they should never guarantee any type of outcome. Like I'm absolutely going to get this for you or I'm, or this is what's absolutely going to happen because honestly he doesn't know. And any type of guarantee is kind of just wishful thinking until you get to the point where there's money exchanging hands or there's something given in court, then it just doesn't make sense to make any type of promise. Keep that type of thought process in mind that you, you want your attorney to be as honest and truthful as possible to you and not just giving you what you want to hear. The last thing you want to do is make a decision on a case based on verbal platitudes and wishful thinking rather than the hard, cold truth that things are more expensive than you'd hoped or that you may not have as good of a case as you're thinking you had. The next thing in this is kind of related to the last thing, but they're different in that they over promise and under deliver. And this is, this is, I see this happen frequently when there's a case matter where the, the client thinks they've got a great case. Reality is they have an okay case. And then when you add opposing counsel to it, you have a bad case. And it's because there's always something that the client leaves out and isn't necessarily, it's not that they're lying. It's just that it's not the complete accurate truth. So when you're looking at it from that perspective, you want to make sure that the attorney is giving you like, like hitting a low bar, not a high, because it's much easier to come back and say, I did better than what I was expecting than to say I did worse. People will hear that, that that's how it went. So you want to make sure that you're doing your under promising and over delivering as opposed to an attorney that is over promising and under delivering. And you can kind of tell how they approach it by their interactions with you to make sure that you're getting what you're looking for and what you're needing. The next thing is, and this is probably a pretty dang big one, is that they're consistently rude to you, their legal assistant, paralegal or judge. If they're rude to anybody like that, number one, they shouldn't be rude to their their assistants for obvious reasons because they, they, that's who they're working with. If they're rude to you, that's not a good thing. And worse is if they're rude to the judge because that can um, bias the judge against you. So that can really harm your case. And I don't know too many attorneys that are rude like that. I've, I've yet to see too many. I have some that are kind of kooky, like I had an attorney make a... Uh, uh, they wanted to put my client in jail because she forgot some paperwork at home. So you got to keep that in mind is that the last thing you want is an attorney that's rude to your judge. That is absolutely unacceptable. I mean, rude to anybody in general, but rude to their judge is, is horrific for your case. That'll just tick off the judge and potentially hurt you later. So please keep that in mind. The last 
thing that you want to make sure that, or a seventh sign of uh, a bad attorney is they won't uh, send regular updates about your case. And this has a lot to do with communication. It kind of ties into number one, but of their own initiative, are they sending you the information that you need in order to make decisions about your case? And sometimes, like I'm working on a case right now where I literally have nothing to tell my guy because nothing's changed since the last time we talked. Now, I could spend the time and send him an update saying that, but it's kind of like, if there's something new, I'll let you know. So, but that's the thing is, are they initiating their own time and doing the right thing to give you what you need as the client for the attorney? And these are all things that, again, a lot of it, more of it has to do with personality and you can't take an isolated incident because as I was saying is it needs to be consistently these things. The reason why is because every attorney is human. Every attorney has a bad day. Every attorney has something go wrong that they weren't anticipating. And it's not fair to judge them by something that they couldn't have anticipated that was just so far out or that was difficult. Maybe, you know, who knows, maybe, I mean, with COVID-19 this year, you don't know if someone they just that they love just passed away and so they're doing the best they can with they, that they have or the courts might be closed or there's, there's a lot of different reasons. So try to give your attorney the benefit of the doubt that they have your best interest at heart most of the time and that these, if there's an occasional aberration of, of quality, that that's not indicative of who they are. Just like you want to be given the benefit of the doubt, give your attorney the benefit of the doubt. They're only human. And again, they make mistakes and shouldn't, you shouldn't hold them to, uh, you know, if they can correct the mistake, great. If they can't, then talk about it. And that's, that's really what we're talking about here is that accept the fact that, you know, no one's perfect and that your attorney will do the best job that they can. And these are things to look for to see if they're not doing as good of a job that they can. But it should be consistently bad, right? It shouldn't be uh, outside the... It shouldn't just be once in a while and then expect them to be... That it's completely bad. Now, uh, we're going to talk about the things that you can do to help you in this endeavor or this difficulty. Because being at odds with your attorney is never a good thing. Uh, we need to have a good line of communication between you and and, our, and us so that we can give you the best legal advice and so that we can represent you to the best of our abilities. Nothing worse than having a strained uh, attorney-client relationship. So if for some reason these things aren't working or that these are some signs that you saw that you're like, oh man, now I have to find a new attorney. Well, not necessarily. First, Schedule an appointment to talk with them. Tell them about your concerns. Give them the benefit of the doubt and let them know that, you know, you want to continue working with them, but this type of thing isn't working for you. And ask them if there's anything that they can do. A lot of attorneys will have it outlined in their engagement agreements, certain things, how they'll communicate, um, as well as how you can get in contact with them, like making appointments, that sort of thing. So it really comes down to keeping that communication open with your attorney to make sure that it's fair and it's that you're getting the best representation as possible. But communication is key on that respect. You want to make sure that you're not assuming anything that exists there or, or doesn't exist there. Next thing is if if the relationship really is going south and it's just like any other relationship, You've communicated your grievances. It might be time to find a new attorney. And in this instance, you want to f- ask family or friends that have worked with attorneys in the past with the same or similar matters as you've had for referrals in order to get the best attorney that might be a better fit than the one that you're currently dealing with. And it's never fun because you have to transfer trust funds and transfer files and there's, there's a lot of difficulty that goes with transferring attorneys. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying it shouldn't just be done because you didn't like one little thing that they did because it, it can hurt your case to have it transferred to someone new. The other thing you want to make sure that you do is review your contract with them for possible remedies such as fee arbitration if your fees are too much. It depends on the contract. Not every attorney puts that in. I'm just saying it, it exists there for a reason. 
and gives you the opportunity to air your grievances about their bills because they can be substantial. The next thing that you can do is you can file a complaint with the state bar if their conduct is egregious. When I say egregious, it's got to be pretty bad. It can't just be a difference of opinion or a difference of personality. There needs to be some significant malfeasance going on for a complaint to the bar because you're putting in question their livelihood. And I'll be honest with you, most attorneys I know are really good people. They make really good decisions. They make good choices. They're doing the best they can with what they have. No case is perfect. No facts are perfect. No case is a slam dunk. No matter is exactly the same. The bar, you know, you've got to consider that it might be just an aberration on that. If there's the, the two instances is if the attorney messes with a client files, if you withhold them, that's number one. Uh, and or two, if they mess with client trust funds, that's number two that will hurt them the most. But having a complaint about them on their record for no reason or because you just didn't like them is it's it's petty and it's un it's unnecessary, right? And you you have to consider that it was a breakdown in the relationship, not necessarily something that you should complain to the bar for. The last thing you should do, if if it's truly not working, you've you've thought about it and it just doesn't make sense, you can find a malpractice attorney that can sue a an attorney for legal malpractice. Now there are some significant downsides to doing that. If there was a breakdown in the attorney-client relationship, if you sue your attorney, they can defend themselves with things that are in your, that would have remained confidential. So if you tell your, some, your attorney something in confidence that could hurt your other case, the last thing you want to do is then sue him because then that could become a matter of public record. And the other opposing counsel on the other side would then have access to that deposition or that information in order because it's a matter of, it could be a matter of public record in that instance. And so you want to think long and hard about suing your attorney for legal malpractice. And then the next thing is the damages factor. If you're in the middle of a case right now, the the way that legal malpractice works is you have to show that but for their negligence, you would have won the case. So if you would have lost the case no matter their negligence or not, then unfortunately you're not going to win either way. So it's it's a hard burden. It's a hard standard to meet because it typically is not, you know, blatant forms of negligence and enough to push you back into losing. So... So filing a, a legal malpractice suit is, is a huge gamble, and it's going to take a lot of time. So you, it's not something quick that you're going to get money immediately. Most won't settle. Most will fight because their license is on the line, and it, it very rarely are, it, do people win. It's got to be pretty bad. I mean, really, really severely bad. Most don't meet that burden. And, and I apologize, that's just the reality, that's the truth. It's, it's rare because most attorneys are really good about covering themselves and protecting themselves. And so it, just like they try to protect their client, right? When I'm reviewing a document, my goal is to protect my client. But now that you're suing me, you know, I'm, you know if, if you're going to sue someone, an attorney is, is challenging to sue for those reasons. These are all of the different ways that... You can have a bad attorney, how you can help it, how you can fix it. And, and these are some of the remedies of what you can do. Number one, just be honest and upfront with them. Be truthful and accept that, again, they're imperfect. They make mistakes and that, uh, you know, holding it against them may not be the smartest way to go about it because of how difficult the road would be to do it unless it's very egregious. I hope you've, if you've gotten value out of this video, please keep in mind that I go live Monday through Friday at 11 a.m., except for on holidays. So I will not be here, you know, on Christmas, New Year's, that type of thing. So please keep that in mind. Don't forget to hit subscribe and like and hit the bell icon to make sure that you're reminded. And we'll talk to you later. Have a good one.